webinar um, introducing Levanta. Um, I, just a couple of things. I wanted to just remind you all that after the session's over, I'm going to be resending out an evaluation form um, that you could fill out um, for Laura, who's presenting today. And you can either send it to myself or you can send it to the email that is in the evaluation form. We will be recording this session, so for some reason if you have any technical difficulties or you have to jump out or you have a coworker that wants to listen to it later, just let me know and um, once the recording's processed and everything, I'll be able to send it over to you. Um, again, you're in listen-only mode, so if you do have any questions, um, feel free to ask them. Just if you look below in the questions or chat tab, just fill out your questions there and Laura will be sure to answer them at the end of the session. Um, and I believe that's it. So now I'm going to hand it over to Laura, who's going to be presenting our webinar for us today. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Megan. And thank you to everybody for tuning in today. Hopefully we'll be able to answer some of your questions about Levanta as the BSCC QIO and provide some helpful information on some recent updates and news that we need to share. I am the Area 1 Communications Lead, which means that I support communications and outreach and the whole of the Northeast, which starts at Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and goes the whole way up. Um, I have about nine years of experience within the QIO program, uh, particularly focusing on the quality improvement side, and now I'm, I'm happy to be on the, um, the beneficiary and family-centered care side of things um, with this new scope of work. To start with some general information about the QIO program, and you may be aware of some of this, uh, but a quality improvement organization works in partnership with all kinds of stakeholders, including patients and providers across all sorts of boundaries um, that may be organizational or cultural or definitely within this new scope of work. There are geographic boundaries that are a little different than they have been in the past. And the function as well is to innovate efficient and effective improvement strategies that are shared widely to lead to rapid large-scale change. Along with that function of the QIO program is the goal of the QIO program, and this is CMS's you know, long language here of what their goal is, but ultimately the goal of the QIO program is to work in partnership across all entities to support the creation of healthy people in healthy communities while lowering costs. So that's sort of the overall um, key, key points of the, the goal of the QIO program. For this specific scope of work, which started on August 1st of 2014, there were quite a few structural changes. <clears throat> I'm sure many of you are aware of those already, uh, but I'm going to get into a little bit more detail about how this work is currently structured. So in the 10th scope of work, that previous scope of work, QIOs were performing both case review and quality improvement work at the state level. So there were 53 QIOs for every state in U.S. territory. With the 11th scope of work, that work has been divided between two different kinds of QIOs. There's the Quality Innovation Network, or QIN QIOs, and the Beneficiary and Family-Centered Care, or BFCC QIOs. In addition to dividing the work between the two types of QIOs, contracts have also been extended. They previously were three years long and now are five years long. So the current contract cycle will run July 31st of 2019. Looking at these two different kinds of QIOs, there are these Quinn QIOs, Quality Innovation Network QIOs, and they are performing quality improvement work only. So those Quinn QIOs focus on the QI side, and they do not do any case review. There are a total of 14 of the Quinn QIOs across the country, and then I've listed here the Area 1 Quinn QIOs, so those are the ones within the Northeast. And you can see that Massachusetts falls under health-centric advisors, and they have partnered with uh, Quality Part or Qualidime, sorry, um, to do work within the Northeast. If you want more information on those Quinn QIOs, you're welcome to visit the QIO program website. If you need contact information or anything like that, or if you have questions about the, the Quinn QIOs, you're welcome to reach out to me, and I'll be happy to put you in touch with the proper folks at your Quinn QIO. Levanta, on the other hand, is what's known as a beneficiary and family-centered care QIO, and they are responsible for case review only, so the, and do not do the quality improvement work. 
So QuinQIOs do the quality improvement, BFCCQIOs are doing case review. In addition to Levanta, there is another BFCCQIO called Keypro. They were previously the QIO for Ohio and have done some um, different work across the country, so you may be familiar with their name already. Levanta services Area 1, which is the Northeast, and Area 5, which is the West Coast. And you can see that on this nice little map here. When I keep talking about Area 1, that is the green. And then Levanta also has the red. And then the rest of the country falls under Keypro. Um, Levanta does have the outlier islands, like the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico, Hawaii, Pacific Territories, and Alaska, in addition to um, the Northeast and the West Coast Territories. So you can see here how regionally and, and geographically things have shifted quite a bit. You have these five regions for the BFCC QIOs. And then you have those 14 Quinn QIOs, um, some of which are geographic and some of which are not. In the Northeast, it's a little bit more geographically focused than in some of the other areas. But again, if you want more information on those Quinn QIOs, you can visit the QIO program website. Levanta, since some of you may not be familiar with it, uh, was established in 2004. And it is a privately held government contracting firm located in Annapolis Junction, Maryland, which is outside of Baltimore and um, sort of the suburbs of Baltimore. And we do employ skilled professionals who specialize in a number of fields, including medical documentation, audit, data analysis, and of course, Medicare Medical Review and Appeals Review programs. Though Levanta was not previously a QIO, uh, the company has held a number of, of um, healthcare and government contracts over the years. So although we're new to being a QIO, we are definitely not new to the world of, of government contracting and the kind of work that we are doing within this scope of work. <clears throat> and looking at what we are doing within this scope of work, the overall tasks are really not that different from what they were previously when the QIOs were functioning at the state level. The majority of what we do is the same kind of um, tasks that those previous QIOs would have been doing. And those tasks include discharge appeals, which is one of the largest parts of the work that we do, along with quality of care reviews and concerns. And those quality of care cases can be complaints or immediate advocacy, referrals, anything like that is handled by Levanta. We also do medical necessity reviews. And we do this on all cases that we review, unless specifically directed otherwise. And that is looking at those cases to ensure that care was both reasonable and medically necessary and was conducted in the appropriate care setting. Some other tasks we are responsible for focus a little bit more on the hospital end of things with higher weighted diagnostic related group reviews, readmission reviews, and MTLA reviews. There are also focus reviews, which is where CMS may ask us to do a specific review in response to something that they have identified. So it could be that trends that they have seen across case review or if there is um, you know, a specific concern identified you know, through the appeal review process, CMS may come back and ask us to conduct a focused review. We are also responsible for making recommendations for quality improvement initiatives, or QIIs, and technical assistance. This is where we look at quality of care concern cases and, and make recommendations to the Quinn QIOs for these quality improvement initiatives related to those cases. So if we identify something within a case, we can refer it to that Quinn QIO to potentially work with that provider on the quality improvement side to address some of those issues. There are also discrimination referrals, which is pretty straightforward. If, if there is a suspicion of delay or denial of care due to discrimination of any kind, we can refer those cases to the Office of Civil Rights. And then we will also be working on patient and family engagement. This will be phased in a little bit later into the scope of work. So I don't have a whole lot of information on it at this point, but as soon as I do, I will be sure to share that. And we are looking forward to working a little bit more with patients and families as we progress through this scope of work. Levanta specifically, as one of these BFCC QIOs, has a structure that is a little bit different from what you may be used to, considering that you know previously everything was done within Massachusetts. We do have operations in two different states. I previously mentioned our headquarters are in Annapolis Junction, Maryland. And then we also have an office in Las Vegas, Nevada. Within that Nevada office, that is where our call centers are housed. 
for both beneficiaries and providers. That's also where we make the requests for medical records for all reviews and also where we perform the reviews for appeals. Within the Maryland office, we receive, scan, and process medical records, and that is also where we do the record reviews for quality of care, utilization review, and the higher weighted DRG reviews. So you can see the divide there. Basically, appeals are, are primarily handled within that Nevada office, and then quality of care concerns and some of the other specific review types are handled out of the Maryland office. This allows us to address um, and process cases as quickly as possible. Um, the Nevada office largely consists of staff that was with the QIO in Nevada Health Insight that had previously worked on their case review. And since Health Insight is no longer doing that work, um, it was uh, easy for us to um, incorporate all of that staff. So we do have staff with many, many years of QIO experience within that Nevada office. For what we need providers specifically to do, if you haven't already, we do need all providers to complete a memorandum of agreement. It is required for certain provider types, including hospitals and critical access hospitals, skilled nursing, and then home health agencies. We also strongly encourage rehab and hospice providers to complete one as well. Any other provider type is welcome to submit one voluntarily. If you do have more than one Medicare provider number, we do ask that you submit one MOA per provider number. So if you're a home health agency that is affiliated with a skilled nursing facility or you have multiple branches, um, as long as those branches have different provider numbers, we need one per provider number. In addition to completing that memorandum of agreement, you do need to update all of your notices with Levanta's contact information. That is included later in this presentation and I'm always happy to share that with you if you need any information. If you are missing the MOA or if you're having trouble with the website, we had originally sent out letters in July providing instructions on how to complete the MOA online. If you didn't get that, if you misplaced it, or if you just need to complete it, you can get a Word version of the MOA through our website. I have the link there. If you just go to our website and click on uh, Medicare Provider, you can get to it that way as well. You're also welcome to email me, uh, and I can send you that Word form as well. It's pretty straightforward. Just complete some of your contact information and email that back in. You do not need to send a print copy. A digital copy is all that is required. Makes it easier for us on our end to get things processed and also saves a lot of paper traveling uh, between organizations. <clears throat> Levanta's website has recently been updated with some new frequently asked questions, and you can see here where our FAQ page is. You can also see in that links and resources box on the box on the right where that MOA form is available for download. So if you're looking for it, you can get it right there. You can see that we have these different categories for frequently asked questions. We keep these updated as frequently as we can largely based on provider feedback. So as we're talking to providers, if we're hearing the same kind of questions over and over again, or if there's a certain trend in a certain topic area, we do try to incorporate that and update it into the website. Uh, we recently added a whole section on HINs. Uh, we had a lot of information from hospitals that there was a lot of questions related to that area. So we did get those updated um, to provide that additional information. So the website is a great place to start if you have some questions that maybe weren't answered by this presentation or to just keep on top of any of the information that we're sharing. <clears throat> some of the FAQs, and these are all available on the website, but I do like to share them through the presentation just to make you aware of some of the information that's out there and hopefully answer some of the questions you have. So what are our hours? We are open <clears throat> from 9 to 5, Monday through Friday and on weekends and holidays from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. In addition to that, there is 24-hour voicemail service available. And even though those call centers are housed in Las Vegas, we staff the line based on the time zones that we serve. So even though it says 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern, the staff in Vegas are coming in at 6 a.m. to work those phone lines. So you don't ever have to worry about adjusting times or worrying about getting a hold of someone. Those lines are staffed for the time zones that we serve. And then you can see here what our contact information is with our toll-free phone number and our TTY number as well. 
For the appeals process, the review process is mandated by CMS, so it should not be that different from what it was with the previous QIO. There are some things here and there that I've heard um, that are affected a little bit more by the regional structure. Um, you know, I, I've heard from some providers, specifically hospitals in Massachusetts, that medical records were often couriered. Um, obviously, with us being located where we are, that's not an option, but the actual appeal process of, you know, uh, when a provider calls, uh, sorry, excuse me, when a patient calls to initiate an appeal and then we make a medical record request and send that off to a physician reviewer and issue a decision and all of those time frames should not deviate from what they were in the previous scope of work. Along the same lines, form content is not changing. CMS is the one that mandates what that form content is. Um, so we, it's up to providers to go and update those forms with Levanta's contact information. You can get them on the CMS website, and the URL is on the screen there, cms.gov slash BNI, that's for Beneficiary Notices Initiative. You can get all sorts of forms there. Most of them are available in both English and Spanish, and the majority of them are also available in PDF and Word. If you have problems finding any of the forms you need, you are welcome again to reach out to me and I will be happy to help you find what you're looking for. If you need to verify your contact information, you're welcome to reach out to me and see what it is that we have on file for you. Prior to the transition, we did receive a large data file from CMS that contained contact information, and we are aware that some of that information was not 100% accurate. So you're always welcome to check and see what we do have on file by either emailing me or calling me. Um, you're also welcome to email and call me to check on your memorandum of agreement. We do often use the information within that memorandum of agreement, or we will be using um, that information to update your contact information. So you're welcome to, to check with me and see what it is that we have on file for you, and I can let you know and then see if we have to make any updates. If a beneficiary were to call the previous QIO, um, calls have been forwarded to Levanta. They were forwarded for the first 90 days of the contract. Obviously, we're beyond that time period, but for the most part, those calls continue to be forwarded. If not, they will get a recorded message that advises uh, the person calling on the correct number, or if they happen to call you know, QIO's corporate line, they have been informed of Levanta's information and can provide correct information to the person who is calling. For sending records for appeals, I talked about this a little bit earlier um, with how this may differ a little bit from how records were previously sent in. Fax is the preferred method. Um, FedEx, or medical records can be FedEx, however, we need you to contact us first through that helpline and let us know that that is how you plan on sending that medical record because FedExing could potentially delay the process. We also do have offices in Maryland and Las Vegas, so we want to make sure that that medical record is being FedEx to the appropriate address. So if you do want to FedEx that record, when we call you to notify you of the appeal, or if we leave a message and, and you know, let you know an appeal has started, please contact us as quickly as possible to let us know if you will be submitting that medical record through a method other than fax. For what you need to send, the requests are specific to the type of review. So obviously, if it's a quality of care concern, that's going to differ than an appeal. But what is required specific to appeals is the medical documentation that supports your decision to issue the notice. We do not need the entire medical record. So if you have a person who's been receiving care for four months, we don't need four months of notes and, and, of that, and all of those pages of the medical record. We need what has changed in that patient's status to lead to you to issue, <clears throat> excuse me, the notice of discharge. That is the key information. The length can vary depending on the provider type and just the complexity of the case, but typically for appeals, between 40 to 50 pages of a medical record is about the maximum that we need to be able to issue a decision. <clears throat> Unfortunately, at this time, we do not have a method to exchange electronic medical records CMS is working on a method, and they are aware that this is a priority for providers to get that electronic method in place. We will be sure to share more information on this as soon as it becomes available, uh, but at this time we are still waiting for more information from CMS on what that system for medical record exchange could be. 
You can, however, use an electronic fax program. There are some free ones and some paid ones, uh, paid ones as well that can be used to send in the medical records. On our end, we receive those medical records digitally. They basically end up as PDFs on the back end, which means you are more than happy to, or more than welcome to, um, send us a digital copy from your end as well. If you need more information on timeframes for medical record requests for appeal, you're welcome to look at the Federal Register. We do follow the guidelines as set by the Federal Register and guided by CMS for medical record requests. And there are links here for hospital appeals and non-hospital appeals as far as the time frame for submitting those medical records. For other cases, like quality cases, um, that will all be detailed in the information that you receive. We've had a lot of providers ask us how Levanta notifies both the providers of the, the excuse me, notifies the provider of both the appeal and the review decision. We notify the provider and Medicare Advantage plan, if applicable, via telephone once an appeal has started, and then that phone call will be followed by a fax medical record request. So after that beneficiary calls in and starts an appeal, our next steps include calling you to let you know that's happened and then faxing you that medical record request. After everything, we get that, that medical record in and it's reviewed by the physician reviewer and that decision has been issued. We will call again to this time the patient, the provider, and the MA plan, if applicable, with what that decision is. Those calls will then be followed by a formal determination letter. If you have not yet received any determination letters, I recommend that you reach out to me um, so that we can look at your contact information and make sure that we have an appropriate address for you. Um, you know, and if, if you haven't received any and we'll get that address updated, I can request that they be reprinted and then sent out to you. To check on the status of a case or receive more information on the outcome of a case, we have a couple different ways you can do this. You're welcome to dial the, the helpline, that 866-815-5440 number that I shared earlier, and select option four to check on the status of your case. You can also check your case status online, and I'm going to go through that process here in just a minute. If a decision has been issued, so you received that determination and phone call as to whether or not we agreed with termination of services, you're welcome to call our case managers at that 855-878-1720 number for specific information on the determination. We ask that you do not call that line until a decision has been received. So if the case is still in process or you have questions before that decision is issued, we recommend that you call the helpline and go through option four or look online. And then once that decision has been rendered, if you have additional questions, you may call the, the 855 number to get additional information on that determination. Again, this helps us process your requests as quickly as possible. Looking at how you can go ahead and check your case online, that is through a feature on our website called Arrow, and it's really easy. You can get to this through the Levanta website on the home page, <clears throat> um, and there's also links from the FAQ page on the provider page where you can access the, the Arrow feature. And all you do is enter your case number, which is your two letter state initial, six digit case number, and then the case type, which is either AP for appeals or QU for quality. And what Arrow shows you is just a high level look at where your case currently is in the process. So you can see here for this sample case, the appeal was started and the medical record was received, so that is where the, docu the, the case is at this moment in time. Steps are gray until they've been completed, and then they're green when they show completed for appeals, and blue when they show completed for quality. And then you can see as the case progresses, the additional fields, those additional arrows turn green, and more information is added <clears throat> at the bottom um, of the page below the arrow. So you can see for this specific case, when the appeal started, when the record was received, what the outcome is, and what the liability is. All of the information shared through Arrow is at the highest level. There is no personally identifiable information included about the patient or the facility. So if somebody happened to get, their, get a case number or was randomly entering numbers, they're not going to be able to tell who the patient is or who the provider is through Arrow. So it's just a great way for you to see where your case is at any time. If you submit maybe your medical records and you're not sure whether or not we got them, instead of having to call, you can just input that case number into Arrow 
And if that all documents received arrow is green, you'll know that we've gotten it, or if it's even past that, you can see where it is, where the case is at any time during the process. Arrow is also available for quality cases. The arrow is a little bit different, you can see here, for quality, because the steps are obviously different for quality cases as well. But you can once again take a look and see where cases are within the, within the process and just give you some high-level information on what is currently happening. Just one quick note on Arrow. We do ask that even though you can use it um, to get high-level information, if you see that a decision has been issued, um, you'll see that liability. Let me go back here a second. Um, you know, you can see the outcome. You can see the liability. We ask that you do not discharge the patient before Levanta has a chance to get to talk to them over the phone. So Arrow is just a way for you to keep informed on where the, the, the case is in the process, but it should not be what you use to alert the patient of what the decision is. We will still call them. We need to share important information with them about what second level appeal rights they have to do a reconsideration and to share additional important information with them. Um, so we do ask that you know you, you can use Arrow just to find out where the case is at any time, but we still need to let Levanta uh, call the patient with the information. Levanta will still be calling providers as well. Arrow is not replacing anything. It's just a tool that can be used in addition to the processes that we already have in place. <clears throat> I strongly encourage everybody to go and visit the Levanta website. You'll see that's where the new FAQs are. It's how you can get access to Arrow. We have posted information on upcoming national training sessions that may be of interest. And we also recently posted our second provider bulletin. That second bulletin includes a lot of the information that was covered in today's presentation about things like Arrow, uh, making sure providers get their MOA in, and the FAQ updates on the website. If you want to be added to our email distribution list for when we share additional updates from Levanta, you're welcome to send me an email, and I will happily add you to that list for when we do share additional information. We don't do that very frequently, so if you sign up and you don't get anything for a couple months, don't be surprised. We don't want to inundate your inboxes. We just like to share key information as it becomes available. And then again, here's all of my contact information. You're welcome to reach out to me at any time through email or phone if you have any questions and visit the website to get even more information on Levanta <clears throat> and the QIO process. So at this time, if anybody has questions, you're welcome to use that chat feature within GoToMeeting and send any questions my way. Megan, I'm not seeing any questions, are you? Just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. The only question I have is from Jody, who wants us to send the presentation, which we can absolutely do for you. I'll, I'll uh, make sure I resend this out. And again, it is being recorded, so just um, send me an email, um, and I'll be sure to send it to you once everything's processed. Does so, anyone else have any questions? Laura, do you have anything else for us? I don't think so. You know, just you, everybody's always welcome to reach out to me. If you do have any questions, um, you know, if maybe you think of something after you get off the webinar, you're welcome to reach out and let me know, and I'm happy to help you, you know, in any way. Um, or send me emails, you know, if you want to check on your MOA or what your contact information is, any of that. Um, I'm happy to help you out with those issues. And then that's it. It looks like um, we actually do have a question from hey. Mary Ellen. Um, she wants to know what the timeline, what is the timeline that the patient needs to call for an appeal? <clears throat> to be yeah, to be considered timely. Um, I need to look up the regulation to, to verify. This would be specific for home health. I think it is by noon the day of discharge. I will verify that and email it, Megan, to you so you can share the answer with everybody, but I am pretty sure it's by noon the day of discharge to be considered timely. They can still file an appeal 
but at that point it wouldn't be considered timely, which then affects the patient's liability and how long we have to return a decision on that appeal. But I will um, find a specific reference and email that out to everybody. Are there any other questions? All right, it looks like that's it. Thank you so much, Laura, for a great presentation. Um, again, uh, everything's recorded. If you have any questions, you can email Laura, or if you have anything specific for me, email me as well. Um, expect a thank you email from me very shortly with the evaluation form. I know that Laura would very much appreciate getting that back. Um, so again, you can send that over to myself or the email address that has that is on the evaluation form. Yep. Yeah, thank you everybody for dialing in today. I hope it was helpful, and I would very much appreciate it if you could uh, in complete that evaluation. It helps us uh, determine what future kinds of presentations we may offer as well. So it's a helpful resource for everybody. All right, thank you all, and have a great rest of your day. Thank you.